It can transport up to 150 passengers without noise and emissions. It has flexible charging solutions and 80% lower energy consumption compared to a diesel bus. This is the Volvo 7900 electric articulated, an important tool in the transition towards sustainable public transports for cities all over the world. Let's find out how this state-of-the-art electric bus is made. The assembly starts simultaneously at many different substations at Volvo Buses Factory in Wrocław, Poland. The finished modules are then transported to the main line for further assembly. The very start of the assembly process is the chassis intake. The chassis is designed for best possible drivability and is manufactured in Sweden. Early on, the very heart of the bus, the electrical motor is installed. Compared to a traditional diesel engine, it's noticeably smaller and lighter. This allows for a better interior layout and more passenger space. The dual electric motor with a two-speed transmission has a maximum power output of 2 times 200 kilowatt and a maximum wheel torque at the driven axle of 31 kilo newton meter. That's enough power to start a fully loaded 18 meter bus on a 20 degree uphill slope. Here, the front module of the bus is put together. In addition to accommodating the driver's workplace, it's also home to most of the bus's advanced technology. Thousands of electrical wires connect all the vital components. Here, the brain of the bus, the AIC, Advanced Information Center, is installed. Once this highly advanced control unit is in place, crucial data can be collected to improve driver behavior, uptime, and safety. One example of this is called Safety Zones, a connected Volvo solution that actively controls the bus speed and increases traffic safety. The roof starts out with this roll of sheet aluminium. The roof is actually a sophisticated key component of Volvo's electric bus as it houses the batteries and cooling system. To handle the extra weight, the bus structure has been reinforced without compromise to drivability or safety. Once completed, the roof is sent to be joined to the body. The complete body structure is then married to the chassis. Now it's time to install the batteries. Their number can be varied to best fit the energy storage capacity needed for each vehicle. This bus houses six lithium-ion batteries with a capacity of 396 kilowatt hour. Piece by piece, the bus is put together. After the wheels have been fitted, it's time for the bus to move using its own power for the first time. Next stop, the paint shop. After three days of careful treatment, it can continue its journey with a new shiny look. This bus is one of the 145 buses that will operate on the streets of Gothenburg, Sweden the largest single delivery of electric buses in Northern Europe. Now the time has come to put the interior in place. The location of the batteries on the roof allows for a smarter interior layout with a low floor throughout the bus and better accessibility for all passengers. When it's time to charge, Volvo Buses offers flexible solutions. While the CCS inlet is mostly used for overnight charging in depot, the OpCharge is a fast charging system used en route that allows for operations 24-7. This specific bus is prepared for a panto down, but a panto up solution is also possible. After passing 21 workstations on the main line, the bus is ready to leave the factory to be tested. Tests that will guarantee the high quality and safety that the Volvo brand stands for. Once the bus gets the green sticker, it can start the mission for which it was manufactured, transporting passengers without emissions and noise, reducing the impact on the climate and efficiently improving quality of life in the cities of... In Gothenburg, Sweden, hundreds of bus drivers are preparing for one of the biggest transitions to electric public transport in Northern Europe. On the 13th of December, 145 Volvo 7900 electric articulated will start operating 34 bus routes in and around the city centre. To ensure a smooth start, careful preparations are needed. 
and of course, a great number of skilled drivers. In close collaboration with Volvo Buses, the operator Transdev is training 750 drivers on how to handle the new buses, from the start-up in the morning to charging en route and leaving the buses in the depot at night. In addition to charging, there are some other important things to keep in mind when driving an electric bus. Did you know that the right driving technique, soft braking and slow acceleration, can save up to 30% energy? The transition to electric city buses will have many benefits for Gothenburg citizens. Less noise, no emissions and a more appealing city environment. The electric buses will also provide a better working environment with less noise and vibrations for the drivers. Electric buses bring great environmental benefits to our cities. They're silent and emission-free, and when they're ready for recycling, almost all their materials can be reused, even the batteries. The batteries from a bus can store energy equivalent to one month's domestic power consumption for two people living in a flat. And storing energy is exactly what we do here in Gothenburg. We're building an energy storage plant using bus battery cells in a system for energy saving, making recycling and recovery part of a circular flow. The batteries are charged by roof-mounted solar panels. Direct sunshine is best, of course, but the panels also charge when the skies are overcast. The electricity that we store is then used for communal needs, such as utility rooms and outdoor lighting. If the batteries are fully charged and we have a surplus, we feed that extra power into the national grid. And at night, this storage system can both give and receive energy from the grid. We provide a buffer that can be quickly called upon during peak load times, avoiding the use of fossil fuel power to meet spikes in demand. With this system, we contribute to a cycle by reusing electric bus batteries giving them a productive second life as a storage solution for solar energy. And in the future, when the batteries are completely dead, we recover the component metals, thus helping to reduce natural resource extraction. In this way, we reduce our climate impact and take another step towards circular energy use. <laughs>